Hello there, Master Halish here, and welcome back to my Open TTD Let's Play, where we're going to be looking at part two of more of your 1940 saves. Now, next episode, we'll be getting back on with expanding my network. We've got lots of ideas and things to come in the coming episodes. But first up is Aaron Powell's submission. So we've got here, um, was it Slice Transport? And the company value is 2.6 mil, and they've got 1.9 mil in the bank. So that's going quite well. Road vehicles and trains, quite a lot of road vehicles. And here we are, we're starting out at Hall Beach Factory, where you can see we've got a nice little station in. Uh, that doesn't go anywhere yet, obviously a work in progress, and a number of trucks going up through Spalding and over to a nearby farm. Obviously taking a similar ta uh, tactic that I did, probably not that interested in this challenge at the moment, but you need to put something in here, otherwise there's a chance this factory might close if you don't supply it with stuff. So that's probably what's going on there. Let's check out the world map and see what's happening elsewhere. So that's down at the whole beach factory. In fact, I can see a second station now. I've zoomed out more. Born East. I'm not quite sure what's going to be going on there. Not enough indication, really. But we've got some network going on up here. So what we've got going on here? So we've got a number of coal mines being connected up down here. We've got a couple of uh, depots, um, uh, road depots to get spread stations in. Looks like trucks were started with initially and actually bringing it up to the same power station I believe that we're doing in our Let's Play. There's some nice um, depots off the main line which is a good way of doing it however mm, mm, I, the signal in is not as I would do it um, when you've got a junction block like you have here you don't have to have signals after the junction block you have signals before the junction block. Let me just get the right size signals. There we go. And you leave that empty. That's roughly how you want to go with those sorts of things. Although it looks like you're not using path signals for some reason. Or if you are, you're using bi-directional path signals on a one-directional track, I think. Um, but overall, looks like you're making some good money. And over what we got over here looks like a bit of a work in progress as well. We've got stuff being brought into workshop now is this passengers it does look like you've got i mean i can't see with these trains vertically maybe if you recognize the top of the carriages but yeah that looks like passenger and mail coming all the way oh leads i um, i like the interesting way you've got your networks here so you have an almost main line and you spur off your main line go through your platforms and then give the trains the options to go back onto the main line or then loop back round. It's a relatively good way of doing it. Um, the only thing is, is if you've got a lot of trains wanting to go into Leeds, you could get a little bit of backlog in this section of track here. Um, again, you've got a similar thing with your signals. You've got a nice signal right before the path, uh, right before the split, but you really don't want signals straight after it because then you could end up with the junction being blocked for no reason. You ideally want to leave enough space before the signal uh, as the length of your train so if we look here you're using stations that are length six in fact you're using beautiful stations i need to sort my stations out that's something i need to sort out very soon um so if you're doing length six trains ideally you want this section of track here before the signal six in length so if a train goes down gets blocked um from going onto the main line you're then not blocking this junction back here um Again, though, those are ideal scenarios, and I don't even follow ideal scenarios myself all the time as well. So you're obviously making good money from the coal, putting in a nice bit of um, passenger network, and there's a bit of a coal loop going on down. What on earth is this? Is this, the tra is this a transfer? Are you picking it up down the bottom here and taking it to the top? Let's have a look at the orders on the, station, on the trains. Yes. Yes, you are. That's actually a spread station. So you're, you've got four coal mines there, and you're supplementing it with these two down here, bringing them up, and then dropping it all off at the power station. So yeah, you're going to be making some good money off that. Let's just quickly nip over to Exeter to see how you're getting on down there. And your population is 2,848. And I see you've got some reserved spaces here. Presumably, you don't want the city to expand in that area, so you can put an airport or more st uh, train stations in. Um, and though you haven't really expanded the no road network and you've only got four stations so in theory you're actually losing out a little bit you, you need five or more stations in a town to get the best growth rate overall though looking very good I like you've got a lot of potential with your network there's a lot of interesting things the way that you're building your signals and track I'm looking forward to seeing more 
let's move on to the next one. Next up we got Massey and their submission and I can see here that another person has opted for yellow. Um, also, I like this. Putting in tracks but leaving gaps for planning purposes. Really quite a good idea. Never, th never thought of that myself before. I mean, I've put in bits of track but actually laying it out so you can see how it's going to go in future. If you... <coughs> Oh cool. <laughs> excuse me, I'm coughing. I'm talking too much, but that's that's the idea of what I'm doing right now. Uh so I can see here you've got a potential for eight platforms, but you've only got one line in in and out. And I think for eight platforms, that's going to problem in, be a problem in the future. You may you're probably going to expand that anyway, but that's an interesting point to look at. We've got something on going on here, I'm not sure what it is. It looks like you've got one big spread no, that's not a spread station, that's is it a feeder station? You looks like you've got a feeder station there. I'm not 100% sure. <laughs> It'd be interesting to find out a bit more about that. But yeah, you, you're definitely going up with the whole Beach Factory Challenge. You're up to 713 crates of goods a month. Um, it looks like you are really going for that challenge. You're bringing in all sorts of farm stuff, all from around Ruskington and Sleaford, bringing it in and round. You've got an, and you start to name your stations quite nicely. So you've got an input up here on your west. You got an input over here. You're obviously getting more, yet yeah, more stuff down there. So a really good factory network. And then what's this? Is this is where you're dropping off the goods? I think so. You've got yeah, there they got the goods. So you've got the factory output station here, and you've used a spread station. And by the looks of it, the only reason you've used a spread station is to be able to move your station further away. It's not for catchment cheating more catchmentness which is nice um and you're just looping that round and, and dropping it off in whiz beach which you must have grown yeah yeah you see look you grew whiz beach with buses so that you could then drop it off nice plan um and then this bit here um again not a, let's look at the train and see what's what the orders are so you you're picking up a full load here and then going to this station and then going round again. No, no idea. <laughs> complete. Drop me a message, put a comment on the video. I'd love to know what's going on there with that one. And again, up here, you are just bringing in more stuff to the factory. So you've really gone to town on this factory challenge, and you're doing really well of it. I like your lines. Obviously, you're not gone for the main line sort of way of doing it. You've gone for the one line kind of loopiness um, that then integrates, um, which is a really good way of doing it. You get good flow on those sorts of lines. Um, the only thing is, is if you get a few loops coming into the same place, for, so for example, uh, you've got this Bourne loop here, um, you've got the Sla uh, is it Stam Stamford loop there, you've got this kind of, um, the, these two loops that kind of link into one, and it's all looping around into this one big loop down here at Crowland South, uh, which means that you may actually get a lot of trains all trying to get down this one piece of track, so you may find you need to again expand those bits of train. You can get a couple of little bit of bottlenecks on those networks in the future potentially. Looking at the world map I can see that you've got some stuff going on down here so you've started what appears to be some sort of passenger network but it looks to be like a closed system so you've got a passenger network between these four towns. It's very close-knit network and the the uh, junctions are all very close as well but it looks like your signaling is really quite good You've got depots before you go into stations by the looks of it. You've got a few depots on the way out of stations too, but with this sort of small network it doesn't really matter too much. And you're obviously not done yet. You're working on more stuff and I can see that there's what appears to be, could be, a main line plan down to London that goes past this smaller network. Oh, and links in with Stevenage. I can see what you're planning there. I like it. I'm looking forward to seeing more. Um, let's see what else is going on, on the, in the town. So you've got little bits all over the place actually coming to look at this. You've got um, this loop here, which uh, again, I'm not really sure what's going on. These trains are, are coming in. Uh, you know what? I know why I'm getting confused. It's because they're spread stations. So this top station up here is gathering from probably all four yeah all four of these coal mines this station and then you're using the spread station to bring it down 
to this power station so the trains are actually going from here to here they're going a very short distance now in some ways that could be really good it can be really efficient just to have chains train lots of trains doing short journeys to move a lot of products very quickly however you do get paid per distance so maintenance wise this is quite good because you need a small amount of track and you're moving a lot of product but sometimes moving a train over a longer distance you get a lot of money and which way to do it I'm not sure there's a massive amount of difference. You might be able to do it both ways and make the same amount of money. Maybe that's something we need to experiment with in the future. So now I've seen that and what you're doing, I'm going to go back down here. Yeah, I've, I think I've figured it out now, or at least partially. This set of platforms here at uh, Crolonese, that's the factory output. So this station's going to start filling up. Then this one, I, th I think this is a... Hang on, no wait, Holby Beach Holt. Yeah, this is a drop-off. Holby Holch is a drop-off, and this one uh, is linked to this station. Oh my goodness, there's so many different stations linked to different bits. Crowland East. Let's have a look. What trains are coming? Ah, here we go. Look, trains are coming to um, full load at Crowland East. And then go to Holby Beach Holt. Oh, that's the steel mill. Right, so the steel mill. Right, so iron ore is coming in at the south. The, the the steel's coming at the east. It's dropping into this station, which is getting picked up. I see. So again, you got the same sort of thing. You got a lot of trains doing a short distance. Now, the best thing about doing a lot of trains with a short distance is the return journey. Your trains don't have to go back very far, and the return journeys are expensive. They like almost double the cost of your trains. But with this, you haven't got much of a return journey. Maybe that's a time-saving thing on there. So lots of different ways of doing things as we're looking at these um, at these various different layouts. You can see that people approach different solutions and uh, different um, problems with different solutions. And not really, you know, you can't really say many of them are wrong. They're just different and there's ways of doing it. I mean, I like the way that you've got the, you, you are using tunnels to connect the trains through onto these tracks and they're splitting through. This network must be working well for you. You've got nearly 4 million in the bank and your network and your company is worth just over 8 million. You've also got some ships, which I didn't notice at first. So let's have a quick look at what's going on with that. So it looks like you, you have one big long line of ships and you have decided not to go around this big watery bit. And you've got little bit of rail network here as well so you've got a number of coal, uh, iron ore mines lots of iron ore mines here coming up there looks like collecting loads of stuff through to this steel mill and then transferring the steel across the water to this factory I wonder how much those boats are making you let's have a look all oh, right it looks like this is brand new um, profit this year is are they brand new how old's the how old the ship let's have a look uh, it's five years old, that ship. What about the first ship you've got here? How, how old's that ship? Five years old. So this hasn't been running that long, but some of these are now starting to make a profit. So I'm guessing if they make a journey within a year, they make their profit. I think overall that's going to be a plus for you. If we look at your money and look at ships, we can look at ship costs are uh, 140,000, ship income 400,000 ish so yes you've been running it a few years yes sure some ships look like they're making a loss but that's only over the course of one year you take it over a course of a number of years and they're all making some good money more than double their costs brilliant let's go check out another one so here we are now with Mordy's submission, and I can see that, yep, you're doing the factory challenge once again. You're up to 64 crates of goods, so that's not too bad. You are taking out your goods onto what appears to be a main-ish line? No. No, it's not. I wouldn't say that's a main line. It's just a line between Peterborough and Spalding. Um, and are you taking any of those to Spalding? Let's have a quick look. So if we go and have a look at the station and all the trains. You've got two trains. I'm guessing they're going to Peterborough. Yeah, they are. They're going to Peterborough. You're bringing stuff in from um, a pickup station. So you've got a number of trains up here. And then for some reason you decide to bring it in by road. I wonder, what, wonder why you thought 
about doing that because I, I, the speed of a train and the efficiency of a train in terms of you've got one engine and lots of carriages maybe you started with the road but then the road doesn't go anywhere it's a road to nowhere interesting and down here you've got a railway line into more farms so you've started with the with that factory challenge you've got all the farms coming in quite nicely it's quite good you've obviously put a bigger station in, in peterborough looking to have things expand there in the future let's have a look at your world map and see what else you've got going on so you've got a little something up here i presume it's coal yeah yeah looks like you've got a bit of coal a couple of coal mines there again looks like you've got some um, trucks and you've got some trains doing exactly the same thing I wonder if you started with trucks and then started to expand and change over to trains we got any other things going on we have let's go have a look in the Highlands double check in the Highlands of Scotland there's a few people that have been asking questions about that does it have to be roads yes does it have to be multiple carriageways no um, it just has to be a road system across the top for that challenge um, and Exeter's grown quite a lot here. Actually, I think you've probably got the one of the biggest Exeters I've seen. Growing every 16 days, now at 7,000. Uh, you've got what appears to be... Yep, you've got five stations in there, all doing quite well. And the road network seems to have expanded quite nicely. But I'm guessing you've done this. I bet you've done that. Let's have a look. So if I come into the centre of town and choose a piece of road... It says owner Exeter. But if we come out here, local authority. Yes, look, owner. MTF Transit. You have placed some of the roads here, which has obviously really helped the town grow. We must all remember to place the roads. It's going to be much better for things overall. And you've also got a nice little train line up to Barnstable as well, which is, uh, which is quite good. So you've primarily focused on the two challenges that most people have focused on. I can see that actually a lot of people have just focused on those two challenges. But to be fair, they are the starting two challenges. Then the highway challenge is probably next. And Exeter would be probably the one. London sat there waiting to be reaped the rewards of having some fantastic stations in. And I've lost where I am. Just want to be up a little bit. There we go. And you've expanded Peterborough quite nicely as well. I do like the one directional roads you've got on here. Um, the thing about one directional roads, it does allow faster vehicles to overtake, just like you saw there, but it doesn't allow vehicles to overtake when they're broken down. That, for me, is a massive pain in the backside. These dual lane roads are brilliant if you've got slow moving vehicles and fast moving vehicles as well. But why? Why can't vehicles overtake broken down ones? That's going on my list to send to the devs. But <laughs> um, I, that's, that's enough of me complaining about road vehicles and, and dual tracks. Um, I think I think this all looking very good. People are doing very well. Um, the stations and layouts that people are doing are all very interesting. I'm learning stuff just by looking at what you guys are doing. And maybe you guys might be learning a little bit from some of my comments as well. So it's a, it's a good little network, a good little company. It's making a little bit of money. You've got 200000 in the bank and it's worth a, a million. So you probably are at the point now where you're going to start getting more and more expansion in this Let's Play the faster the faster you go starting with the whole beach factory challenge is one of the hardest things to do namely because you have to build across farmland which is very expensive you have to bring things in to a factory which you don't get massively good rates for grain if we have a look at the graphs not operating profit your operating profit looks beautiful by the way uh, cargo payments rates if we disable all of them and compare grain and livestock to coal Coal pays much better than grain and livestock. In fact, if we have a look at passengers, passengers is down here. Okay, the difference with passengers is that you tend, if you get good um, placement of platforms at good sized cities, you get a lot more throughput of passengers. With coal and things like that, you get your trains, your trains can tend, especially in the early game, tend to be sat there waiting to fill up a lot. With passengers, you get that a little less. Um, but also passengers are interesting because cargo distribution and stuff. But certainly looking at why doing factories is um, more difficult than just going straight for coal. That's your reason. You get more money from doing the coal. But steel. People very often forget about steel. When they, build, when they go for a factory, they often go, right, I need some grain and livestock, and they pile it in. Um, 
I think the main reason they do that is because it's easier, because it's a primary industry going straight into the factory. With steel, you need the iron ore. But again, you can see that the iron ore, the red line, still makes more than the um, livestock or grain. So actually, getting iron ore to a steel mill and then getting that as... Um, uh, if we turn that off and... Well, actually, let's leave coal on and then do goods... You're actually better than doing coal because, well, not better because if you just do coal, you, you're probably best off. But you're better, definitely better than doing livestock or grain. So if anybody's thinking about working with a factory, do consider looking for iron ore mines, getting it to a steel mill, steel mill to the factory, and then the factory to goods to a town. Because you will get a lot more money than just doing straight old livestock and grain to a factory but it will be a little bit more complicated because you've got those steps to do. You've got a link in a link in a link, but there's a benefit from that, a big benefit. Well, I've rambled a little bit about cargo payment rates on the end of this one. I hope you've enjoyed this episode. Like I said at the beginning, we're going to be cracking on with my series. We've got a couple of live episodes planned. I'm not quite sure when they'll be, but keep an eye out on Discord, Facebook, and other social media for them. If you're not involved with my Discord, please go to masterhellish.net and have a look at Hellish Places. Look at the look for the link for Hellish Places in the video description. Go over there and check it out. I will see you soon. Take care, thanks for watching, and thanks to all the submissions we've seen, and I'm sorry for those people who submitted things who we haven't got time to look at this time. We will look at different ones next time, and probably in, in 10 or 20 years. Watch out, I will announce it in an episode. Goodbye, Terra.